During our time as medical students, Maxus and I witnessed many people suffer from untreatable diseases. This has always led us to two questions. Why does the drug discovery and development take 12 years? And what can we, having a background in both chemistry and mathematics, do to fix this? For each drug that makes it to the market, as many as 20,000 drug-like molecules need to be made in a laboratory for testing, in a process called chemical synthesis. Designing how to synthesize a given molecule is highly inefficient and prone to errors. It involves chemists manually digging through tens and hundreds of scientific publications. Chemical synthesis is the overlooked bottleneck in drug discovery. Until now. Introducing Molecule One, the future of chemical synthesis. Molecule One leverages artificial intelligence to design novel chemical synthesis within seconds instead of hours or days. First, the user inputs the structure of the molecule they want to make. It is then analyzed by our patent-pending technology. The system tries to find a way to make it from commercially available molecules. Finally, found ways are ranked according to user-preferred criteria, presented to the user, and supported with lab-tested evidence. Let me show you how it works. Move to the demo, please. Can we move to the demo, please? Thank you. First, let's input the structure of osimertinib. We chose a marketed drug as the design target, as we cannot publicly show structures that are property of our clients. Maxus picks search parameters that are typical for late-stage drug discovery. Medium quantity, short shipping time of starting materials. The design process has been launched. You can see that the first results are available within just a few seconds. The system is based on deep learning. It utilizes, it utilizes uh, information about previous experiments to find out what kinds of transformations between different molecules are viable. It is then able to propose novel synthesis steps. Viable steps are then assembled into multi-step pathways that lead all the way from starting materials to the desired product. The search has finished, and the best result is shown to the user. On the left side of the screen, we see the molecule, one that the user wanted to make. With the eight of different colors, the user is able to trace each atom from the target molecule all the way back to starting materials. Let's take a look at a particular step. It is possible to dive into lab-tested reference for this step. This helps the chemist to easily proceed with the design synthesis into the lab. Back to the demo, please. Thank you. A process that used to take hours and days can now be done in under a minute. A process that needs to be iterated thousands of times for just one drug. The synthesis target of Zimertinib is used to treat aggressive forms of lung cancer. It brought $1.9 billion in revenue in 2018. The product that you have just witnessed in action is the work of this exceptionally talented team, which every single day bridges the gap between chemistry and technology. Software of our competitors does not utilize AI to leverage chemical data sets for synthesis planning and often has trouble generalizing to novel molecules. Also, their software looks and interacts with the user 
like it was created 15 plus years ago. Our initial focus is the drug discovery ecosystem, which craves for the utilization of recent advances in artificial intelligence, including future applications like fine chemicals or agrochemistry. It's a $500 billion market. We use SaaS paid by number of seats or data points, and we have an enterprise tier with custom integrations and optional on-premise deployment. Molecule One has several partnerships with industry leaders. eMolecules, the leading marketplace for molecules. AWS, with whom we are exploring a joint project at a Fortune Global 500 pharmaceutical company. We have another trial scheduled with such company. We have a trial scheduled with another such company within two weeks. And right now, our software is evaluated by a medium-sized drug discovery company. Make medicines faster. Cure patients faster. Go to molecule.one today and optimize your synthesis pipeline. Judges. Thanks for that. Can you tell us more about the data that you've been training on and the data that you're feeding into the system? Yes. And how it gets smarter and does it get smarter across customers? Yes, absolutely. So the basic version, the one that you saw today, is based solely on publicly available data. The main source is the, uh, our chemical patents and reactions that are extracted from there. Uh, of course, we wanted to get smarter with time, and we want the customers to be able to utilize their own data. So we built the system in such a way that it will accept more reaction data and get smarter with that. Just a follow-up question on that. So what's, and do you have data on the um, success rate or kind of efficacy of that? And kind of what are there as perhaps theoretical limits that you can do with that existing data? So it's, it's kind of hard to do that without a wet lab. So we had to resort to some other measures. One thing we did was planning synthesis for molecules with non-synthesis and ensuring that the software doesn't have access to these known synthesis. So we try to figure out whether the software is able to recreate the synthesis from other information. And it was able to do that in about 85% of cases. So that, that's one. And we performed a lot of experiments to validate our machine learning models and see whether they are actually learning stuff about chemistry or just recreating stuff from memory. And, and do you have any what the traditional or substitute benchmarks are? Excuse me? And do you have any, and, you know, do you, how would that compare to perhaps a traditional or other sources that these customers might be using? So the thing is that if you use traditional source like uh, the, our competitors, it's very hard, for example, to to plan a synthesis for a novel molecule. So it's, it's, it's practically impossible in most of the cases. And that's what we, that's what we want to do, because drug discovery needs new molecules. You can't just recreate molecules that have, uh, that have been constructed in the past. And comparing to the traditional pen and paper approach, it's, uh, it's much faster with a similar accuracy rate. As, as you're going into early customers, target buyers, et cetera, what, what is uh, resonating for the early adopters, and, and what are the biggest objections you're getting to early adoption? So the problem with our ideal customer is Big Pharma, and the problem with them is the long sales cycle, and the biggest reason for that in our case is that they have data security concerns. So it's hard for them to trust a small company with their data that are proprietary. So one example how we're mitigating that, apart from employing security policies, is partnering with guys like AWS, who already have a relationship with the big pharma guys, and help us to overcome those initial Problems. Are you finding early advocates who are helping you break through, or like what is the profile of the kind of individual within these companies that are the most willing to experiment? Chemists, especially medicinal chemists, because it's medicinal chemists who do all these novel molecules. 
I would say that um, bigger companies are better because they have more time to experiment on new stuff, and so uh, with smaller companies, you just like need to. The, they have too much to do except for uh, trying out new stuff. So, yeah, I would say that. Is there a particular type of disease that you guys are finding that customers are are utilizing you guys? I'm for? sorry. Could you repeat? Is there is there a uh, type of disease that you find that customers are utilizing your service for? So we're disease agnostic. Mm, the important distinction to make here is that we design syntheses for so-called small molecule drugs, so not antibodies, not receptors. And another important distinction to make is that we're not a what company. There are companies like Atomwise, which design structures for Alzheimer's drug, etc. We take those structures and design the processes to make them. So, oh, go ahead. Good, good, no, go for it. So there are, are many companies that have generated multi-billion dollar exits by taking a molecule through clinical trials. Um, however, I, I struggle to think of a single company that's doing or that has been doing synthesis or high throughput screening or testing that's been able to achieve that kind of outcome. Why is it that you've chosen to leave the money on the table for the companies that take these through clinical trials or the food and chemistry companies that make products out of these as opposed to doing that yourselves? Answer so, quickly. I would say capital intensity, because what we're doing is basically software, so much less capital intensive. And regarding what you said, that it's hard to spot an exit in this, it's because the necessary technology has emerged only very recently. The neural nets we're using were designed last year or even this year, and we're constantly trying new stuff, so that's the reason. All right, one more round of applause for Molecule One.